Warning, this episode contains profanity, and frankly, all things considered, you're lucky it contains anything else. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Adam and Eve, Stamps.com, and by Weed. Weed! Because it fucks up the sound quality when I bite through the microphone with rage. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Mike Wiseman from The Bible Says What the Podcast. And not only does every pastor I talk to worship a documented child killer, but we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men and women. <laughs> it was a great day. Okay. That was my It's Thursday. Go ahead. <laughs> it's November 5th. <laughs> and it's never been more awkward that we record this show on a Wednesday afternoon. Just let me refresh one more time. I'm refreshing. No, I'm refreshing. Heath, we, Heath, we have I'm, to podcast. Refresh. I, I'm, I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bond. I'm refreshed. Heath Enright. <laughs> and from Jared Kushner's New Jersey, Cincinnati, Red State and Waycross <laughs> Swing State. This <laughs> is the right. Scathing Atheist. <laughs> On this week's episode, we'll send Mama Bear Apologetics off with a super funny, super good song. Huh? Mm-hmm. Refreshing. Fuck! <laughs> and I'll find out that quitting smoking has a final exam. <laughs> <laughs> but first, the diatribe. All right, so normally I, I try to record my diatribe before dinner on Wednesday so I can get the show out early for patrons and get to be done working before midnight. But this week, I didn't even start writing the damn thing until almost midnight. I just I kept hitting refresh, staring at that election map, waiting for some clarity, eager to properly calibrate my anger for this one. Now, I didn't exactly get clarity Hopefully you have some by the time you hear this, right? Hopefully things continue the way they're looking and Biden takes it in the squeaker. And if that's the case, we only need to turn our anger up to 10.99879. Because, you know, as idiotic as this outcome is, at least it doesn't appear to be the stupidest thing imaginable, which, let's face it, is what we've come to expect from this dumbass fucking country. You know, all that being said, I'd say this is dumber than 2016. Right. Like like even assuming a Biden victory, knowing everything we know now about Donald Trump after four years of corruption, lies, incompetence, fraud, negligence, vituperations, racism, misogyny, xenophobia, self-dealing, nepotism, divisiveness, and binding all that shit together like the mortar, the relentless frothing at the mouth stupidity after all that. The best we as a nation can muster is a tepid, yeah, you probably not, I guess. That's it? I was I was so fucking wrong. I, I thought because I had such a low opinion of the American populace, I couldn't possibly be overestimating them. I thought so little of us that it didn't even seem mathematically possible for us to be worse than I gave us credit for. But we are. For there to be even the remotest chance of America rescuing some shred of its international dignity, we needed a goddamn landslide. We needed a mandate of historic proportions. We needed to stand up and say enough in a single fucking voice. And I genuinely thought that's what we do. I genuinely believed that we would have never made this mistake in 2016 if we really knew what we were getting into. And I was wrong. Millions of us, tens of millions of us are just willing to march blindly into some theocratic idiocracy, even as the bodies drop by the thousands around us. And for what? What do they get out of it? You know, it's it's literally just that they get to win. It's spite. There's no agenda. Trump hasn't accomplished anything. He hasn't even promised to accomplish anything this time around. He literally ran with no platform other than to agree with himself. And that was enough for damn near half of American voters. And I honestly don't know what to do with that. 
It seems to undercut the whole foundation of humanism to me. Is it naive to hope that these fucking idiots will ever be worth our trouble? Should, should we just look after ourselves, gather in a tight circle and point our guns outward in all directions? I mean, as stupid as that fucking sounds, it's getting really hard to argue that there's anything more sensible to do. We're surrounded by idiots that would send you to the gas chamber just to avoid losing a fucking Twitter fight. In 2016, I was wondering if we could be safe. In 2020, I'm left wondering whether we should be. And look, I don't want to promote hate. I don't want to say we should hate the other side, but we should kind of hate the other side. We're talking about people who have no particular qualms about kidnapping children as a deterrent to their parents. And if we insist on continuing to imbue people like that with some kind of basic humanity, we risk finding ourselves forever chained to this station. This position where we stand there gawking at the electoral map going, how the fuck can any of this even be close? To ascribe some kind of moral foundation to the average American person is to reject all the observable evidence at this point. I'm not saying that the people on the other side are evil. I'm just saying that their actions are functionally indistinguishable from evil. I mean, keep telling yourself that that asshole with the Trump sign in his yard is the kind of person that would run into a burning building to save a neighbor. He wouldn't put on a fucking mask to save a neighbor. And whether that's because he's evil, stupid, or undereducated and misled doesn't matter much when you're that neighbor. Our nation is rotten all the way through. It is deeply, fundamentally, foundationally broken. And our tendency to see the good in the people around us, our, our combination of empathy and cultural blindness leaves us in a terrible position if we want to fix it. We refuse to recognize the problem because to truly grasp how evil and shitty America is, you have to admit how evil and shitty the people you care about are. Your friends and your family. You have to admit that Uncle Frank isn't just an asshole. He's evil. Your Aunt Kathy isn't just stupid. She's dangerous. And even after you just watched them spend four years pledging undying allegiance to someone as unapologetically malicious as Donald Trump, you still bristle when I apply terms like that to them. Even now, as you watch him leap to his defense and threaten to take up arms against democracy, you can't help but think, evil, Noah, really, evil, yes, really. We can't afford that kind of naivety anymore. This is a life and death struggle and the deaths are already in the six figure range. We need to stare the ugliness of America right in the fucking face without pretending that America is some immutable system that happens in Washington, D.C. and state capitol buildings. It's us. We need to see how evil and terrible this nation is, even if we can only see some of its blemishes when we look in a fucking mirror. Because the story about the emperor's new clothes takes on a much darker tone when it's 20 degrees below zero. And it has never been colder than it is right now. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Steve Kornacki and John King to my like whoever Vanna White's the election map over on Fox News. He then right in Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to look at the numbers? Refreshing again. I'm refreshing. Damn it, Keith, Heath, that is not what he meant. Uh, you know it's it. Same. It's okay, same. it's not, but like, is there anything, is an update on Pennsylvania? No, not that you're... No, no, nothing since the end of the diatribe. No. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, while I double check that, we're going to pause for a quick word from our first sponsor this week, Adam and Eve. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. Are you stressed out? Are you feeling a little high strung? Who put this chair by my desk? Ch chair, chair's always been at your desk, yep, buddy. In there. Well, that's yep. stupid. That's stupid. Oh, okay. Right. Well, uh, we'd like to remind you that there's no better way to take the edge off than with one of the many fine products available at adamandeve.com. This window is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it is. Oh, ah, it's there, there it is. Yep. And right now, you can get almost any one item for 50% off when you use offer code SCATHING. That's SCATHING at checkout. Because we could all use a little self-care right now. And there's no better care than down there. So one more time, go to adamandeve.com and use that offer code SCATHING for 50% off almost any one item. I'm going to the kitchen. I hate it in here. Oh, no, Binky's in there. That's where Binky is. Hey, Binky, how you doing, little buddy? 
Aww. Don't awe at me, you bald mick! Okay. Fair. <laughs> and now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, we, <laughs> we had an election yesterday, and there's going to be a winner declared. I love it how I can say a sentence that ends in a period right now, but I can't, or maybe I can't. I don't know. Well, <laughs> uh, let's talk about some stuff. As everybody knows, and... As everybody already knew going into Election Day, the giant volume of mail-in ballots are going to take a while to count, so we don't have a definitive winner as of Wednesday afternoon. But regardless of the winner, here's a depressing sentence that ends in a period. We do have a president right now, and it's Donald Trump. <sighs> At least until he's removed from office and jailed forever for committing treason-level election fraud by declaring the elusive they as guilty of election fraud and declaring himself the winner at 2 a.m. Yep. To be clear, they is counting. Yep. They yeah. is the concept of counting votes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It, it was so weird watching his Twitter timeline today because he kept yelling that they should stop doing counting, but he didn't stop doing that after Biden got the lead in Michigan. <laughs> so like the Biden campaign at a certain point is like, I hope. Oh, Okay. You're stupid. <laughs> uh, Mr. Trump, Mr. Biden already knocked over all the milk cans and took the bear. It, it doesn't matter if you get one more throw. <laughs> the cans are... Okay. <laughs> so, here's a few of the exact words from the President of the United States. Just in case you somehow magically made yourself go to sleep in the last 48 hours <laughs> and you missed his attempt at a Twitter coup <laughs> and then an oratorial coup. Oh, and the Twitter coup didn't really work, yeah. <laughs> no. He started with a tweet that said, quote, we are up big, but they are trying to steal the election. We will never let them do it. Votes cannot be cast after the polls are closed. <laughs> End quote. Yeah, and well, and to be clear, when he tweeted that, he was down in both the reported popular vote and the electoral college <laughs> exactly. vote that had been declared. So, just for the record, you actually can't see that tweet right now because nope. Twitter realized they probably shouldn't display treason on their website. Right. And in response, the Trump campaign posted the statement on Facebook, too. And apparently, Mark Zuckerberg's not the liberal shill that Jack Dorsey nope. is. So Facebook left up the post, but they did put a notice next to it that says, this is dangerous lying, but we're still going to leave it there. And considering Facebook's role in the 2016 election, it seems like Zuckerberg should just have to follow around Trump for the rest of his life, holding up a poster board that says dangerous lie whenever Trump talks in real life. Mm -hmm. I feel like that should be a rule. Yeah, but then he lets Russia pay 500 guys to hold up signs that say Zuckerberg is lying. We're right back where we started. You know, it gets. <laughs> so following that tweet, Joe Biden gave a quick speech from outside his campaign headquarters in Delaware about his optimism regarding the remaining vote count. And then about an hour later, Trump walked out on stage at the White House, read off a bunch of numbers that. He clearly didn't understand. No, because no. <laughs> the total number of percents is tricky for him. And then he said, frankly, we did win this election. He also mm -hmm. added, we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. <laughs> like you say when you win an election. Yeah. Let's cut to Mark Zuckerberg standing there going like, OK, wait, do I hold up the sign for we want all voting to stop? I don't. <laughs> it, is. it does, though. <laughs> So, in response to Trump calling for all the voting to end, I think the vast majority of Americans responded, uh, okay, we'll stop? We'll stop. <laughs> that being said, I've been voting hard for all of Wednesday so many times, and I'm not going to stop until I am forced by a court ruling. <laughs> okay. But here's the real question. Now can I poop in Nate Silver's shoes? No, you still cannot <laughs> poop in Nate Silver's shoes. Hate being the new guy. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and in School of Hard Cox news, former president of Liberty University would like to put the year 2020 behind him. Would the he? year in which... Yes, it's... <laughs> <huh>. <laughs> 
<laughs> the year in which he negligently kept his school open in spite of COVID, took a picture of himself with his pants undone with a woman who wasn't his wife and put it on Instagram, officially revealed to the world that his wife was fucking the pool boy while he watched and then got so drunk he fell down the stairs and his wife had to call an ambulance for him. Jerry Falwell Jr. wants you to forget all of that happened this year, so he's suing Liberty University for making him look bad. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. But in fairness to Falwell, they should not have hired him. I think he's right. Like, <laughs> if they don't hire him, he's just like some dude who enjoys cuck stuff. <laughs> who doesn't know how to stay in his drinking lane and go downstairs on his ass one step at a time like the liquid cat. That, that's tons of people who never make the news. <laughs> it's a third All right, of this but, podcast. <laughs> All right, Only but honestly, stairs. though, um, if I was given the option of wiping 2020 from my memory altogether, the only thing that would give me pause is the Jerry stuff and that bit where Ben Shapiro's wife told him a wet vagina was a disease. <laughs> that's right? true. Don't take that's this true. from me, Jerry. <laughs> that's our yearbook. <laughs> so, according to PR Newswire, quote, In his complaint filed in the Commonwealth of Virginia Circuit Court for the city of Lynchburg, Mr. Falwell claims that Liberty University needlessly injured and damaged his reputation through a series of statements published in print and spoken in large public forums and streamed online following his forced resignation from the university. End yeah, quote. I'm starting to think that guy who sued a reporter for trespassing when they asked questions on his campus doesn't know how the law works. <laughs> <laughs> and quick reminder here at the end, Falwell received a $10 million severance yeah. from Liberty University. So I want to say, just for the record right now, I want to clear the air that if Noah and Heath ever find the red box and give me $10 million when they fire me for it, I can promise here and now I will not sue them. What? What's the red box? You, you know what? Withdrawn. I don't Two even, votes. Let's Two, just move on. Three votes. And in Karen Height 451 News, <laughs> Christian activist group One Million Moms had another roundtable meeting at Karen's house last week. And as usual, they scoured their exhaustive archive containing all the advertisements for every consumer product from the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. And they selected their finalists for which persecution to whine about. Last time around, it was an ad for Frank's Red Hot from January of 2019 that implied a naughty word. So they listened to a few body radio ads for morphine tonic and phosphate soda, <laughs> but they finally landed on a new TV commercial for Uber Eats. The ad appears to be aimed at selling food delivery. That's what it sounds like, right? You hear Uber Eats, that's what they would advertise for, but it also secretly changes the sexuality of children by showing them Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye wearing a gymnastics leotard. Oh, oh I love that the Christian outrage machine is running out of shit, right? We've yeah. gone from Teen Vogue wants to teach your children anal sex to a gay person existed on my television. <laughs> yep. so, all right, so I'm sorry, not to backtrack here, but... Karen Height 451 is so much more memorable of a name, <laughs> and it's so much closer to the real number. You guys should really consider that. Think about it. Come on, <laughs> ladies. So, along with Van Ness, the ad also featured five-time Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles, who did some gymnastics and named some food that would get delivered. That was the ad. Of course, this turned a bunch of kids into cisgender women of color yeah and then <laughs> van ness would do the same thing thus making kids into non-binary white people and that second part was a big problem for the maternal horde also the of color thing if i had to guess and <laughs> staying within their factor of error they tweeted about it to their 4800 followers with a link to their strongly worded op-ed according to the moms quote Casting a cross-dresser in its ads screams liberal agenda and turns off potential Uber Eats customers. For anyone curious or struggling with sexual identity, watching someone uh, prance around in the opposite sex's clothing is not the answer. Yeah, everyone knows the answer is electroshock therapy. Just ask the vice president. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so we're really going with prance around in our press release, are we? Prance? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. so first of all, if I'm struggling with my sexual identity... Watching Jonathan Van Ness and his 
majestic beard, wearing Simone Biles' leotard, showing off his lithe, graceful body <laughs> doing gymnastics, and naming delicious foods is exactly <laughs> what I would want. Just so many great ideas. I want that if I'm not struggling with my sexual identity. Right? We, yeah. we, we all just want that. <laughs> Why right? would you not want that? But more importantly... I'm not switching over to DoorDash like a fucking communist and losing my rewards points for Uber Eats. That's crazy. Either way, one million moms and their Twitter community of 4,800 people is much smaller than our Puzzle in a Thunderstorm team, also known as one trillion podcasters. <laughs> and also much, much smaller than one bazillion people who hate bigot moms. Yeah. So I sure hope... One million moms in their Twitter group doesn't get hijacked like the Proud Boys hashtag. I would hate to see that. That would be a damn shame if that were to happen. Yeah. And in which guy did you vote for news? You know, it might take us years to pick apart the results of this week's election. Which way the undecided voters went and how COVID affected voting are all long-term questions with no easy answers. Luckily for us, we don't have to wait because the Christian Broadcasting Network already has a theory. Donald Trump was attacked by a bunch of witches. Of course. Yeah, a, a year ago. They, they attacked him a year ago. Then he got impeached. Then like 250,000 Americans died while he pretended COVID was a hoax and mm -hmm. counting. Uh, then the spell kicked in and affected his vote this year. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for those of you who missed it, all of America's witches and 75% of its undercuts used their <laughs> magic powers to bind Donald Trump this past Halloween, which is fucking stupid. Uh, last Halloween of yeah. 2019 yep. <laughs> with, with a one-year fuse on the uh, spell. Uh, yeah. so, so, Heath, as a former Wiccan, I assure you that witch magic is dictated by the divine wheel of... You'll have probably forgot we did this by then. And that wheel cannot be rushed. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, if witches actually had magic powers, then eight out of 10 of their Facebook posts wouldn't be about how capitalism is the reason they got fired from their part-time job at a yoga studio. <laughs> but the folks over at Christian Broadcasting Network are stupid and dangerous. Yeah. So they put an article on their website asking their users to use their prayer magic to stop the witch magic. <laughs> but And now we need the witches to stop the <laughs> prayer. Maybe I'm, like our best bet would just be to coax all the religions into some kind of thought magic Ouroboros until they all starve to death or something. <laughs> yes, good idea. And I got to say, this whole article is absolutely worth reading because there's so many terrifying ins and outs. So one little quote. Trinity College in Connecticut tracked witchcraft's prevalence for some 18 years. <laughs> Trinity College, the alma mater of Tucker Carlson. Oh, really? Lovely. <laughs> He's doing great things for that endowment, some witchcraft <laughs> research. <laughs> it continues, researchers found that in 1990, there were an estimated 8,000 Wiccans in the U.S. That number grew to 340,000 in 2008. Wait, so by, by researchers, they mean that guy we met who knows how to do the Google? Because <laughs> th those are the goddamn census numbers. <laughs> Research. You can just look those up. <laughs> okay. But my favorite part of this article is that it ends with an interview with a Roman Catholic priest and the designated exorcist of the Archdiocese of in Indianapolis, oh, Father Jesus. Vincent Lampert, who says, quote, some of them may be doing it thinking it's just fun, but they are gambling with evil. And just because their motive is one way doesn't mean they're not opening up an entry point for evil in their own life. I think evil <laughs> will present itself as something good, maybe initially to attract people's attention, to draw people in. But then, ultimately, people are going to discover it's all about fracturing lives. End quote. <laughs> so, okay, well, so with that reminder that... Whatever we win and whatever we lose, at least we're not on the side of the argument that's duty bound to be afraid of its own goddamn imagination. We'll take a quick break for a word from this week's second sponsor, Stamps.com. <coughs> no, 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 no. It needs to be higher pitched. <coughs> yeah, okay. Much better. Thank hey, you. hey, Heath, did you borrow my... Why is Eli dressed in blackface again? No, no. Don't make me put a dollar in the jar. I'm a chimney sweep. I'm a chimney sweep. What? He said chimney sweep. Why are you a chimney sweep? Okay, so you know how this holiday season, more people are going to be mailing stuff than ever before? Uh, I imagine so, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So what better way to beat the lines at the post office than by dressing as a Dickensian orphan? Oh, okay, but why not just try stamps.com? What's <coughs> stamps? Oh, okay, okay. No, you, you, you do it. You can do it. What's stamps.com? Heath, he's not really a chimney sweep. Damn it. I knew you weren't really a chimney sweep. Stamps.com right. brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller fulfilling orders during this record-setting holiday season, or even a giant warehouse sending thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Wow, that sounds great. Plus, with Stamps.com, you get $0.05 cents off of every first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Wait, I can ship through UPS using stamps.com? Yeah, you sure can. Don't spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up for stamps.com instead. There's no risk. With our promo code SCATHING, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in SCATHING. That's stamps.com. Enter SCATHING. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. All right, Noah, we are in. Oh, man, so I swept all those chimneys for nothing? I mean, not for nothing. Ch chimney looks great. Thank you. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Misogyny. Well, we don't have a clear picture of the electorate, and we won't for some time. But when you consider the extent to which women's rights were on the ballot in this election, there's one thing I'm willing to say for sure. If you set a white woman in America on fire, they might not put the flames out if it means getting their hair wet. I mean, for fuck's sakes, ladies, we're the majority here. And if you need an example of how this shit works, might I suggest you look at Poland? As you'll recall from last week, Poland's extreme right-wing government just effectively banned abortion. And so the women of that country basically said, the fuck you did. In what was apparently the largest demonstration Poland has seen since the collapse of the Soviet Union, more than 100,000 people turned out in Warsaw to protest the decision. Protests went on for days, and the latest news as of the time of this recording is that the government has delayed implementation of the new ban. Meanwhile, back in the good old U.S. of A., Lindsey fucking Graham prevails in the most expensive Senate campaign in the history of the universe, even after saying that women could go anywhere in this country, quote, if you are pro-life, if you embrace your religion, and you follow traditional family structure, end quote. So in other words, you can go anywhere you want as long as it's somewhere he says you can go. He said a remarkably similar thing about black Americans about a week before that. And still, we send him back to the goddamn Senate. Of course, I can't blame the women in this country entirely. I mean, they voted better than the men did, at least. And it's also worth reminding myself that much of the time when they didn't, it's because they're victimized by the same shit we're fighting against every week on this show. And just in case we were in danger of forgetting that, plenty of Christian leaders were piping up to remind Christian women that God wants them to vote how their husbands tell them to. Like, for example, Jesse Sumter of the Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho, who took time off from packing hundreds of people at a time into small spaces amid some of the worst pandemic numbers in the country, to remind the church's Twitter followers, quote, Brothers, a friendly reminder for elections. Make sure your wife votes exactly as you do. End quote. And how the hell one makes sure of how their wife votes is entirely beyond me. But it sounds an awful lot like advocating for voter intimidation to me. So, you know, if laws ever start applying to religious people, he might have to worry about that. Anyway, I've got a page to refresh incessantly, so I'll wrap things up there and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in Vaccine the Light news tonight, good news, Christians. You can cough on each other again. What's more, you can go, you can minister to people who have tested positive for COVID, let them breathe all over you, and then go hug other Christians. Or even lick them. And if you don't believe me, you're doubting the word of God himself. It was everywhere but New York, maybe you've heard of him. As interpreted <laughs> by Kenneth Copeland. Ah, you know, the word of God interpreted by Kenneth Copeland is usually just a giant glowing collection plate. So this is new. This is no, interesting. It is. It, well, he's, yeah. it's similar to. OK, so you're probably thinking that 
Kenny learned this through some divine revelation or something. But no, no, he deduced it. Did it with his deducement, and and he and he provided <laughs> <Did> evidence. He? <laughs> quote, yeah, mm, quote. I was noticing today, President Trump and his beautiful first lady without masks. They are immune. They are immune. <laughs> he said it twice. That's it, like it's in the quote. And this display of our president giving God thanks for helping in that time, and he walked out immune somehow. Glory to God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, man. We're immune. We are going through this thing with a Holy Spirit immunity from the works of the devil. End quote. <laughs> okay. Well, that's induction. He induced it. He did it with inducement. <laughs> okay. No, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess my thought is prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Handle some snakes. Drink some fucking COVID. We, we'll become the scathing Christian if you prove it. Oh, Go absolutely. Ahead. In I mean, a we might be the yeah. scathing Christians by fiat, depending on what we learn about Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, well, so he doesn't need Pennsylvania. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's pretty damn definitive. Uh, and as much as I think Christians should go out and start licking each other right away to celebrate the news, it's worth pointing out that this is not the first time that Copeland has claimed that God had cured COVID for some or, or, or all of his listeners. Uh, nor is it the the second time or the... I mean, I don't even think we're in single digits anymore, but, but this time was different because in the past, one was required to like touch his hand through your TV screen to receive immunity, or in the most memorable instance, Copeland would have to like keep the virus at bay by personally spitting on it. Um, so it's probably best to take a middle-of-the-road approach and only lick a medium amount of each other until we learn more. Yeah, stay conservative. <laughs> They and did. in Thomas Equinus news. So you know what? Humanity the, doesn't deserve you, Heath, and America definitely doesn't no, deserve you. That's brilliant. Big Fucking percentage. Brilliant. Equinus. Equine <laughs> joke. It's a horse. I'm going to talk about a horse thing <laughs> in a second. So despite their sterling reputation throughout history for being completely reasonable, the Chicago Police Department might have had a little stumble this week as part of their community outreach to the downtrodden white evangelicals <laughs> of the city, officers of the CPD celebrated the feast of St. Francis of Assisi by heading over to Grace Place Episcopal Church and Holy Trinity Lutheran Church to get a blessing for their horses. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so insensitive. Everyone knows all horses are Jewish. Uh, how's that? Because uh, they eat hay. Oops. Moving right <laughs> along. So this is <laughs> offensive. For several reasons. Also illegal. Yeah. The officers were on the clock and in uniform representing the city and doing a PR stunt for a magical tax exempt horse whispering service from some Christian sorceress lady in a robe. <laughs> and that's why the Freedom From Religion Foundation had to write a letter to the Chicago Police Department that basically said, wow, can't believe we have to explain this, but... Stop spending time and taxpayer money on a farcical theocratic ceremony. <laughs> Strange women lying with wands, distributing wards <laughs> is no basis for a system of government and law enforcement. But, you know, they said it super nicely for some reason without any Mounty Python references. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you say that, Heath, but did you know Chicago PD has never shot an unarmed black man who weighs the same as a duck? Never, not once. <laughs> huh? Interesting. Interesting. That's a good point. Keep that in mind. So the blatant disrespect for state church separation is the obvious problem. But most importantly, <laughs> I'm offended because the FFRF had to spend fucking time on this and they had to do it nicely. See, I don't know that they had to be nice. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, good point. But they did anyway. I mean, yes, the constitutional principle they mentioned is super important, but... The top line explanation for the Chicago Police Department is you're fucking stupid. That's stupid. Yeah. But the chief of police in exactly zero American police departments is a logical atheist person telling their officers, no, your job today is not horse magic. You're fired <laughs> for even asking. Fired for asking, yeah. So what we're trying to say, the FFRF, is that we'd be happy. If you want to run your letters by us, we can remove the nice from <laughs> yeah. them. We'll do that. Before you send it. We're in. 
And finally tonight, in not fetus news. See, that's the pun you deserve this week, America. <laughs> How dare you? Pun. How dare you? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lead pastor at Skyline Church. Still better than the chili of the same name. <laughs> in San Diego, <laughs> California. And man who looks like if Alex Trebek shaved off his mustache and ate it, Jim Garlow <laughs> took to the internet this week to voice his concern for a group of uncounted voters. And no, it's not the mail-in ballots. the mail-in? No, nope. it's not the okay. mail-in ballots that were thrown out or the people at high risk for COVID who can't vote in person. Jim Garlow is concerned for the 60 million aborted fetuses <laughs> who he claims all would have voted for Donald Trump. Well, okay, come, come on. We would have fucking eaten some of them in our <laughs> QAnon parties, wouldn't we? Come on. It's like it's like a Schrodinger's fetus situation. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, I want to talk to you about something that's happening right here in our community and in our nation. It's the election. You tend to think of it as being Republican versus Democrat. It's not. You might think of it as being right versus left. It's not. It's right versus wrong. It's good versus evil. What do I mean by that? Funny how people on the left don't have to clarify what they mean when they <laughs> say that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> One party, the Democratic Party, has the platform that allows you to dismember, to rip apart a baby in the womb with no anesthesia right but to the point of birth. <laughs> what? The <laughs> anesthesia is the thing? Yeah, right. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, no, from now on, we'll inject the fetus with morphine. Yeah, That'll go great. Sure, man. <laughs> that makes you happy. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> and one Democrat governor actually says you can kill the baby after it's been born. That is what? barbaric. So End you, quote. So, murder? Yeah, there's, there's murder. There's a pro-murder Democratic governor that, <laughs> that you can't name because it's a secret? <laughs> you, you sure you're not talking about every Republican governor and the death penalty? Because that would make sense if that's what you meant. Or, or their COVID-19 response. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> that could be it. I, sorry, that's the same. They're repetitive. <laughs> and uh, as promised, he concludes, quote, 60 million babies that have been killed in the womb. If they could be polled, they would be voting for Donald Trump and Republican candidates because they would like to have the privilege to live. <laughs> End quote. That's all right. Well, them. I guess we all need a minute to thank a lady who killed her little Trump supporter in utero. So uh, <laughs> we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Refreshing? No, he, we have to podcast. There's still a C, there's a C segment. When we come back, Hillary Morgan Farrow will finally admit that Christians suck. All good things must come to an end. Oh, that's so sad. And uh, and we're super hoping that turns out to be true of bad things, too, right now, Refreshing. obviously. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> lemon, lemon. And, well, there's one bad thing whose terminus is still up in the air, more or less. We can at least say for certain that we've reached the end of Mama Bear Apologetics, that book by Hillary Morgan Ferrer et al. <laughs> uh, that we've been breaking down for the last 31 years. So, yeah, it was bound to end eventually, even though there were times when I'd have sworn otherwise. So, Eli, uh, where does it all end? Well, Noah, this week we're going to tackle what I would say is the final boss of the entire book, Change. Of any kind, in any form, because the last chapter of Mama Bear Apologetics is called Christianity Needs a Makeover, Progressive Christianity, written by Elisa Childers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This book needs a makeover, written by a new author we hired to write our final chapter, <laughs> like a movie that needed a new act three, because <laughs> otherwise... The book was going to end with Hillary Morgan Ferrer talking about feminism. Yeah, so, probably right. a good move, actually. Jesus, it was bound to happen eventually. They've devoured everything in sight, and now they're eating themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, and we're going to start this chapter with a metaphor so pained, I think there are Eighth Amendment grounds to dismiss it. Well, I mean, it's cruel. I wouldn't say unusual. We've read the yeah. book. Yeah, <laughs> it's an and, yeah. not an or. So Elisa explains that progressive Christianity is like mixing all the sodas from the soda dispenser together. A little Marxism here, Wait. a little feminism there, and wham, <laughs> you have progressive Christianity. But unlike the aforementioned gross soda mixture, which, based on your feelings about Dr. Pepper, I can only assume that Noah and Heath love, Elisa assures us that progressive Christianity is not harmless. That's correct. 
And the chapter? And the chapter. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. Don't keep By the talking. Way, for, for reasons I can't even begin to comprehend, that soda concoction when I was a kid, we called it a suicide. Okay, thank you so nope. much, Noah. We called it that too, but I was so worried that if I pointed that out, <laughs> you guys were just going to tell me that like my dad was hinting something to me. So <laughs> I think maybe he's still. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, it could be both. It could be both. Yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't. Yeah. And just in case we don't believe Elisa, because. That's fucking stupid. Elisa is going to tell us the chilling tale of when she, as a young mother, was invited to a discussion group at her church led by an agnostic. Thunder, lightning, lightning, thunder. (laughs) (laughs) And Elisa knows what you're thinking. I guarantee she does not. (laughs) I'm not even convinced she would know what that would entail. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So you're probably thinking something as terrible as that could never happen to you. Well, guess what? Quote. Little did I know, at the same time, there were groups, classes, meetings, online forums, and conversations happening all over the country, flooded with people questioning historic Christian beliefs, such as the atonement, the exclusivity of Christianity, the authority of the Bible, the literal resurrection of Jesus, the nature of sin, the definition of heaven, and the reality of hell, end quote. (laughs) Boy, isn't that just Christianity in a nutshell for you, though? Like, I learned that there were thousands and thousands of interpretations, all of them with the same amount of biblical justification. So I set about correcting all but one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she concludes, like, with a fucking flashlight under her chin, as far as I know, I am the only soul in that class who came out with his or her faith intact. The rest oh, went on. Battery. To... I'm going to switch it. Yeah. Okay. She's slapping it. it against her hand. The rest went on to identify, along with the church itself, as a progressive Christian community. Thunder, Ooh. lightning, cat scream. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So everyone was still Christian, just progressive now, mm-hmm. which means... Elisa saying, I kept my faith intact, literally meant, I'm very proud to say, I kept my bigotry intact. That's what you that want, yeah, means. Yeah, those are the parts she's talking about them changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So with the scary story section out of the way, it's time to roar like a mother for the last time, which I'm not going <sighs> to lie. This, this made me a little sad because this is the last time I get to torture Heath with this terrible anagram. Actually, you know what? Acronym. I'm excited. Let's R recognize this fucking message. <laughs> they centrifuged Christianity and the evangelical sine qua non is bigotry. Please proceed. Tell yep. us about that, Elisa. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, Elisa's going to point out what I actually think is a valid criticism of progressive Christianity, at least from a theological perspective. So, if you dilute your religion down to saying nothing is certain, there are no hard and fast rules, according to Elisa... At that point, you can't also say your religion is based on the perfect word of the omnipotent, omniscient creator of the universe. Now, um, what I, is that I, I should you? caveat that <laughs> her solution is that the Bible is the perfect word of the God and we should act mm. like it. Well, our solution is for your woke friends to stop pretending that Jesus managed to slip Black Lives Matter into the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> When everyone was kneeling for Jesus during that sermon, it was a Kaepernick thing, actually. No, no, no. (laughs) Stop it. You're also a problem. Right. But Elisa also fails to acknowledge that this, like, choose your own religion, fucking keep your thumb on the page version also goes the other way. Right. Which is why trans and gay rights can suddenly become central to so many people's concept of religious freedom, even while they're on their third divorce. Right. No, it's it's like if instead of spinning the couch to the left and coming in the other way, you just like watch TV in the front yard from now on. <laughs> yeah. So after pointing out that progressive Christianity has no core beliefs, Elisa is going to tell us the five core She's beliefs to progressive yep. Christianity. <laughs> gonna list them. Yeah. Cool. Uh, first up, a rejection of the exclusivity of Christianity, that Jesus is the only way to God. T- to which her response is, predictably... No, and and she doesn't really give any evidence for this. She just dedicates a paragraph to shitting on Rob Bell again for describing God in terms of energy and force. <laughs> and in summation of the book that I did not write, uh, all dogs go to hell. Great, <laughs> just like those Marxist fetuses that get aborted and every single human being before two thousand years ago. Great. <laughs> That's right, and. 
most of the ones since. Exactly. Yeah, the vast exactly. majority of other ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The second core belief of progressive Christianity, a rejection of the atoning blood sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And again, she she just shits on Rob Bell some more. I I starting to think that he took her lunch money or something. And <laughs> and if you're thinking of this Namby Bambi, what if we weren't a human sacrifice cult stops at Rob Bell? She also tells us that quote in a blog post about how to talk to your kids about Easter, a progressive Christian children's pastor wrote that telling kids Jesus died for their sins could be psychologically damaging. And quote, All right, now drink yeah. this blood or you'll be tortured in a lake of fire with those Marxist fucking fetuses. <laughs> and your you're, dog. You're a child. <laughs> and I'm a grown-up. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's hoping for. Uh, so the third belief of progressive Christianity is a lowered view of scripture. And what she means by that and makes very, very clear is that some assholes think that rabbits don't chew their cud. <laughs> That's right. According to Elisa, any view of the Bible that isn't this is the perfect inerrant word of God is a lowered view of scripture. Also, wow. just listing the things that are like that. The Emancipation Proclamation, a lowered view of scripture. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that's a t- we'll skip that one. Ta- tag on the back of my shirt, lowered view of scripture. Oh, yeah, that's a good yep. one. That one mm-hmm. I didn't yep. sound as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth belief of progressive Christianity is a redefining of words, parentheses, linguistic theft, and parentheses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quote, for example... When I told my agnostic pastor that I was uncomfortable with where some of our class discussions were heading, she sounds fun, he encouraged me to ask him (laughs) any question I had. He promised to answer honestly and said that no inquiry was off limits. I asked, do you believe in hell? And do you believe the Bible is divinely inspired? He answered unequivocally yes to both. That put me at ease enough to continue in the class, although I was very confused at how he could believe the Bible was divinely inspired, yet question its truthfulness. A few months later, flashlights back under the chin, I came to understand what he meant by divinely inspired. He believed the Bible was inspired much like the writings of C.S. Lewis or A.W. Tozer, but not in any special kind of way. And hell, (laughs) he meant it in a figurative sense, as in living out the negative consequences of bad choices we make here on Earth. And I was devastated to learn that he was secretly being reasonable. (laughs) It's dogs and fetuses in a lake of fire. Am I crazy? Is nobody hearing this? (laughs) This is a ridiculous agnostic class. (laughs) Fuck you. I'm going to go to my one million moms meeting. Yeah. And last, but not least, the final core belief of progressive Christianity that, again, I just need to remind you, Elisa wants to reject is, quote, a focus on social justice. Yeah. Those motherfuckers. (laughs) So we're back to our anagram. Now it's time to O, offer discernment. And Elisa's going to throw us a bone here. She, She admits that, yeah, I mean... Technically, all the Christianity that doesn't burn witches at the stake is progressive, but like every other chapter of this book that we read, the problem isn't the progress people have wanted, it's the progress people have wanted the second the various authors of this book decided everyone had all the rights they would ever need. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look, it's it's not actually that we think the Bible should be taken literally so much as that we're not allowed to use anti-gay slurs anymore, but Amazon will sell an apologetic <laughs> book. <laughs> she even points out that Christians sucking super hard is part of the cause of progressive Christianity. The problem, according to Elisa at least, is that people tried to reform the religion, not the people. Or as she puts it, doctrine doesn't abuse people, people abuse people. Yeah, maybe your lives matter if you stop resisting a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it's time to, A, argue for a healthier approach. And Elisa admits that it can be pretty tricky to figure out what the right kind of Christianity is. Oh, so for a second, I thought you were going to say that she admitted it was tricky to argue for a better approach than social justice. But (laughs) upon reflection, I have no fucking clue why I thought that. (laughs) Yeah, well, luckily for us, there is a good way to pick the right flavor of Christianity. And it's the Bible. Or, Mm. as she puts it, quote, 
This is why we have the Word of God. It's vital that we adhere to the doctrine of biblical authority, that the Bible has final say when it comes to issues relating to our faith. If we want to have a healthy Christian life, believing in Scripture's authority is the only way to assure that your worldview is in line with reality. Yeah, it's about the intent of the founding father. And the fucking Supreme Court agrees. Fantastic. Yeah, it does. And finally, we're going to R, reinforced by discussion, by discussion discipleship, discipleship, and, and prayer. prayer. I yep. nailed it. And I love that she uses this last section to plug her talk here. At the beginning of her talk, this is her little technique here, she puts up a picture of her daughter and talks about how cute she is. Then, at the end of the talk, she puts up a picture of another little girl who looks like her daughter. And when the audience presumably goes like, oh, she's so cute, she goes, that's not my daughter, idiots, but you didn't know that because you don't know my daughter. <laughs> she does seem fun. Her point right. being, quote, the best way to spot counterfeit Christianity in any form is to know the real thing, end quote. Okay, <laughs> not that I don't appreciate the fact that she figured out a clever thing to do about that once, couldn't think of a way to put it into the book, so just talked about what it's like <laughs> when she does it in her talk. Um, you got to be careful giving talks at churches that could be interpreted as, you should get to know my kid, lady. I just... <laughs> good advice. Yeah. 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 And she concludes this section with such a perfect quote, we should sell it on a t-shirt and donate the money to Planned Parenthood in her name. Christianity is not progressive. It's eternal. <laughs> <laughs> we're not evil we are infinity is- <laughs> was, yeah well except they, they went with the opposite of evil but yeah yeah exactly we're not the opposite of evil all right so now it's time for the last set of discussion questions gentlemen are you ready sure no. why not number one icebreaker when you were a kid did you ever create a soda concoction like the one elisa described why did you like it was it the taste or the freedom yeah, I did. It was Diet Pepsi and Tonic, though. <laughs> not sure how to answer the question. That's what we had in the house. We had Diet Pepsi and Tonic. See, at the family, yes, I loved it. And yes, it was because I hated God. I knew it. I right, knew so, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number two, main theme. People are changing historic Christian doctrines to accommodate the times. Do you think the Bible is out of step with society? Do you think adherence to societal norms is the test of truth? Why or why not? I think Donald Trump's re-election is the test of truth in God. So uh, I'm a Christian now or, or not, depending on what happens. Should, refresh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. But, so, but not to be repetitive, but their argument here is we shouldn't change Christian doctrines to accommodate modern times. We should change them to accommodate the time when the black people knew their place. Yes, exactly. All right. Number three, self-evaluation. Do you find yourself drawn to progressive Christianity or repulsed by it? Yes. <laughs> How strong is your reaction? Infinity. <laughs> Evil. Why do you think you react the way you do? Ibid. <laughs> In what ways can you be discerning about what you read and listen to? Oh, I joined the Antifa Navy. Oh, so nice. Yeah. Get into it. <laughs> Try right, to have so a boat I... rally. Try. See what happens. <laughs> All right, so I find myself repulsed because diet bullshit is still bullshit, and uh, I can be more discerning about what I read by letting Eli read the entire book one on one of these for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, brainstorm. Where have you seen these ideas in books, conferences, or devotionals? Hold on. Should I put a line on a piece of paper? And <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not yet. Sad. I brought a piece of paper. I, I had a line <laughs> piece of paper ready to fucking go. <laughs> Crumple it. Great, <laughs> asshole. Why do you think the message of progressive Christianity is so attractive? Oh, that was a hoax at the Democratic National Convention. We tricked <laughs> you. So, can you think it. of specific examples of progressive Christian thinking that you've read or heard? I, I, well, I uh, heard about an apologetics book where women teach. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and finally, release the bear. If you find yourself conversing with a person or your kids who've been influenced by progressive Christian thinking, ask him or her, how did you come to your conclusions? Keep in mind all the isms you've learned. Do they believe truth is relative? Postmodernism. Is he or she skeptical of miracles? Naturalism. Does he or she say that the truths in the Bible are too harsh? Emotionalism. 
Oh, I wasn't listening to their answer. I started walking away. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the book. So, huh. guys, one last question. What do you think we learned from Mama Bear Apologetics? Oh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> then, um, have uh, that. Refresh. Maybe I can help. What are you doing here, Hillary Morgan Ferrer? <laughs> oh, Noah, I'm here to tell you what you learned from my book, silly. Um, okay, I guess. Uh, back in the good old days, we were set in our ways, and the Bible was true. Dare a duck came along, everything went wrong, and now we're run by the Jews. Kids today have thrown away truth, and by truth I mean God, that's what truth means to me. Everyone's postmodern but me. I don't know, Hillary Morgan Fair. That sounds like a vast oversimplification of hundreds of years of. <laughs> Who won't someone tell me please why nobody sees the lies that they tell? Self-help hugs you and cries while it sends all you guys straight to hell. Now I've laid it out in my book. If you just take a look, it's easy to see. Everyone's postmodern but me. But you understand that literally everyone except you. Hush now. Look, I know it's not easy to face. Your kids might think you're a drag. But if you don't do it now, they'll turn your kids into homosexual. Danger baby bear's face If mama bears only knew So buy my book And read my blog And check my podcast too Everyone's postmodern but me I mean, can you at least admit that maybe I'm singing Everyone is wrong as could be Oh, if only they'd see I could show them the way Books full of postmodern lies All a compromise So that you can be gay Rich people have to be bad Feminists going mad Wanting college for free Everyone's postmodern but me Really? Everyone in the world? Yep! Everyone's postmodern but me In the whole wide world Everyone and everything From Star Wars to Lord of the Rings Everyone's postmodern You sound like a sexy baby. Before we get back to refreshing tonight, I want to offer a quick update on Vulgarity for Charity. Uh, That's the annual fundraiser we do where we trade insults for charitable donations. Normally, we start that in November, but a combination of a very high number of our listeners being out of work and the fact that we still have a ton of insults that we have to do from the last year's fundraiser still is going to force us to postpone it this time around. So apologies if you've been looking forward to this and you've been wanting to get your insult in. I still encourage you to donate to our favorite charity, Modest Needs, uh, which you'll find linked in the show notes. But we don't feel right putting any pressure on anybody to donate given the current state of the economy. Uh, anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday, an even newer episode of our sister show's hot friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd be cheating you out of the outro content if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for our help in keeping me sane with all his sick math skills. I need to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lucians for not making cupcakes this year. I also want to thank the quite lovely and quite talented Eli Bosnick for eventually agreeing to be talked back from the ledge on Tuesday night. I also want to thank Mike Wiseman from the Bible Says What podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Incidentally, if you'd like that 
question answered. You'll find a link to his show on the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people. And I'll do it by name, I promise. But I have to do that next week because it's been a really long couple of days. I have not slept much at all. Uh, but I will compliment the shit out of your genitals. I will make it worth your wait. Anyway, if you want to give us money, you can uh, make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in a money type way, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media. Our audio engineer is Morgan Clark. We'll also roll the music that was used in the episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All right, here we go. Should I just refresh it one more time? Yeah, refresh it one more time. A little <laughs> bit more Pennsylvania coming in. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.